you. Hello, welcome to Trust Your Glitter. This is Christy Bellich, and I am here with the astrology for the week of June the 11th through the 18th. I'm also on another camera this week. I'm on live stream this week. And if anybody watched last week, I had a live stream where I had a panic attack. So I just have to be really, really honest and say if I do have a panic attack this week, I'm just going to kind of work through it. So in order to kind of work through panic attacks, I'm just going to start this podcast out today with three slow breaths um, to ground the energy. So if you like to do meditation, I just like to get into a comfortable seated position and, um, oh goodness, see, hold on, this will stay on live. See, this is what happens when you are recording things, and I'm going to keep this in, but the live is going to stay on. It's probably going to say live paused. There we go. Okay. I have to restart my live. So this part will actually all keep on YouTube because it's all part of the process, and it's all part of the journey, and it's all part of the beauty that is technology today. And I, um, it's the beauty of life. So let me restart my live. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Trust Your Glitter Live Part 2, Technical Error. So I'm back and I'm also on my um, YouTube. So I'm on two cameras this week. I'm working out tech stuff as I go along, but this is for the astrology of June the 11th through 18th, and um, I have tarot cards out. If anybody pops on the live that wants tarot cards, just let me know. Um, we've got a we've got a pretty interesting week ahead in astrology, so I kind of want to get into that, and then I'm just going to do, as I said here, over here on YouTube, um, and Spotify. This is going to go out on Spotify as well. I'm going to do three deep breaths going in um, to ground the energy. So I'm in a seated position, feet on the ground, steady on the ground, and I'm just going to take three breaths in and hold and release two, three, and breathe in. And hold and release two, three. And breathe in and hold and release two, three. Okay, good. Uh, welcome to Trust Your Glitter. I am having fun with this podcast. I, you know, the transits of this week ahead are bringing us um, a lot of mixed signals in certain ways. Uh, today is June 11th. The energy is very, you know, retrograde -y. We had Pluto re-enter Capricorn uh, today. And this morning when Pluto entered Capricorn, that's bringing us back a lot of lessons. So we're going to talk about that. I know we talked about that on the last podcast, but it's going to be something that really kind of reflects our energy this week. Um, the energy is between, you know, we have Pluto in a cardinal sign, and then the sun is in a mutable sign. Uh, and then this morning, also uh, Mercury, uh, which is the planet of our mind. It is the planet of communication. But Mercury also rules our mind, our, you know, how we cognitively discern things goes through our Mercury. So in many ways, you know, Mercury entered the sign of Gemini this morning, which is very good. Um, if I were going to say like three 
three enjoyments of the week and sort of three things to watch out for. So the three enjoyments of this week, June the 11th through the 18th is A, we have a new moon in the sign of Gemini, which is very nice um, because it's bringing us this lesson of analytical sort of statistical analysis. So I am looking at this with the lens of another highlight here is the fact that Mercury has returned home. Meaning, you know, Mercury, um, Mercury's co-signs are Virgo and Gemini. So Mercury is very, very, very happy in the sign of Gemini. And this is something that is a very nice dynamic for the week. And we also have um, just with the harmony that's going on this week, there's also sort of this pool. There's also these undertones of Neptune as well uh, that I kind of want to talk about as well, because it's not just you know, we're thinking things through a cognitive lens. But when Neptune's here, Neptune wants to ask us about our hopes and dreams. And in this particular case, something that I would uh, say is, you know, yes, we still have these fixed influences in the sky, but with the mutable energy moving through, I really like this as a point of, you know, this is something to look forward to because the energy just start to move. And the other thing is, you know, if we're kind of looking at this from like a broader perspective, you know, look out for, and I'm going to use my notes here because I do, the times and the dates are really important. So today, look out for the fact, you know, Pluto is back into Capricorn. And this is a lesson for us um, about deep, psychoanalysis. This is like when I said that Pluto is about transformation in astrology, Pluto is the sign of the swamp. You know, this is sort of where, you know, the sign of Capricorn is this earthy sign, but Pluto represents sort of more of this watery energy. So it's like this mud, we're going back into the mud here. We're going back and having to review a lot of different things related to power, authority, and how that is utilized in society, how that's reflected in our careers, because Capricorn is the sign of our kind of like our livelihood and our career. So this is also something that's going to be kind of an assignment, um, you know, through September for us. And the other thing is something to look out for this week is the sun is going to be square to Saturn, and that is going to be on the 15th. The thing that's important about this, Saturn's in, in the sign of Pisces. Saturn's been in the sign of Pisces since March the 7th. And the thing about that is having Saturn in Pisces brings us through, again, this Neptunian undertone that's going on. Neptune is our hopes, wishes, creativity um it can also be sort of where we get a little bit delusional as well you know so when i say analytical statistical week ahead what i mean is get statistical with your dreams and i'm doing the same thing too redirect like go through that goal list and i think it's important to note that also on the 17th saturn goes retrograde so not only do we have pluto retrograde in the sign of Capricorn, which is ruled by Saturn, but we also have Saturn now going into retrograde and Saturn will be in retrograde until November the 4th. So this is a pretty big deal because this is about life purpose and this is about career. And I do like Saturn in the sign of Pisces because it does, it's, you know, Saturn is one of the harshest planets Saturn and Pluto are kind of seen as the harsher outer planets in the zodiac. All right. And the thing is, it's kind of one of those things where you want to really look 
into are you doing this because you love this are you doing this because you feel like you have to do this are you doing this because you're addicted to suffering which is very capricorn so i i do want to say you know these are three things to really look out for and you know the new moon on the 18th of june is bringing us you know this the sun moon alignment in gemini at 26 degrees um, is when this, there's a square here. I mean, if you think about it, the new moon's in a square to Neptune. And with that energy comes a lot of, almost like I'm thinking at it, like looking at your reflection in the water. It's like that feeling of seeing your reflection, the, the, the twin aspect of Gemini is now kind of moving with the energy of water. So um, this is, I mean, I have so many notes for this week and I don't, I, I, it's like, I need to go off script a little bit because as you see on this video, I'm just going to keep rolling with it. I am a chronic perfectionist and a little bit of backstory about me is I am kind of going through healing with anxiety right now. And part of that is very Saturnic. I'm going through a Saturn square right now. We all go through things called Saturn returns, usually around the age. Well, Saturn return is around the age of 28, 29, 30, depending on your chart, depending where Saturn is in your chart. Um, and then, you know, in our late fifties and then just count every 28 years, uh, our Saturn squares kind of, and we have also Saturn oppositions, are these kind of times of re-upping these energies. So I'm going through a Saturn square, my Saturn's in Sagittarius, and it's conjunct my moon, and I am a Capricorn rising, and um, I am an extremely Saturnic person. So when my perfectionist stuff gets kind of out of kilter, that's when my anxiety and depression get really bad. And I'm a stand-up comedian. I love stand-up comedy more than anything in the world. And for me, on a personal level, you know, I am a storyteller. I I love traveling for comedy. I love what I do. But for me right now, and I've talked about this on on uh, my podcast, but I didn't put the video out, the videos on my sub stack. Um, and I have some clips out there, but just for me right now, um, I was, this is a very Pluto circumstance. This is a very, uh, Saturn thing. So I want to share the story because I think it, it, it might help somebody out there when you're reassessing your life, the things that I'm reassessing as somebody whose chart is ruled by Saturn, meaning, you know, while we have all the Saturn in the sky, um, you know, I'm looking at, what did I learn during my Saturn return? Well, my Saturn return, for example, brought me stand-up comedy, got me on stage, had me leave the science lab where I used to work. Um, I used to always be hiding in the back of a science lab. And I would have never have thought that a girl like me, a woman like me, um, an old lady like me now, would ever have my face on a video or even on a live stream or even on a stage. So for me, this is my life work. This is like a foreign concept to me in a lot of ways. And on the 13th of June would technically be my 10 year anniversary in stand up comedy from the first time I got up on stage at Eastville Comedy Club in New York City um, before it moved to Brooklyn. So it's a very interesting week ahead as somebody who, you know, entered my life going into college thinking I was going to be in the medical field, um, being in the medical field, and then my Saturn return brought me into stand-up comedy. And now at my Saturn square, deciding how healthy certain aspects of stand-up comedy are for me. And so I'm revisiting my roots. I'm from a place called Laurel, Maryland. And I'm very, very, I don't, 
I think East Coast, I mean, when I was in Texas, when I lived in Texas, like, I will tell you, like, people in Texas are freaking passionate about Texas. Like, there's, you think people are passionate about New York. Texans are freaking passionate about Texas. And it's no, like, like, I feel like in the United States, people from Florida are passionate about being from Florida, Texas, California, I'd say. Um, and, uh, you know, when you meet East Coasters, it's usually like, you know, what part of the East Coast people are from that they're extremely passionate about. But I will tell you, like, people don't really ever talk about how passionate Marylanders are about Maryland. Like, the the sticker, the the car sticker game in Maryland is real. Like, I know people have car stickers in other states, but even when I'm in other states, I will, there's never a comparison. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll say there's a close second with, with South Carolina. Okay. I'll get South Carolina. I'll give you a close second with your sticker game on the back of the cars with the palm tree and the, the moon. But I could be in the middle. I could be in the middle of Boise, Idaho, and there will be somebody with a crab sticker that has a Maryland flag in the sticker. It's like a sticker crab with the Maryland flag. People from Maryland are passionate about their car sticker game. I digress. Look, if you're watching me, you're watching a Sagittarius moon in progress. So if anybody has any tarot questions, you're welcome to ask me. I am just taking my time. I'm going very, very slow with my live streams. Um, you know, Saturn returns, Saturn squares, on any outer planet transits really bring you these very interesting changes in your life. Um, and for me, it was sustainability. Like, you know, driving Uber around LA at the age that I'm at now and reassessing my goals is kind of like being like, well, do I want to be 48 and trying to not die going up a canyon, trying to deliver tacos to a mansion? And, or do I want to do exactly um, what the owner or what the trainer of Archangelo's horse at the Belmont Stakes did. And she, um, so I'm going to, I'm going to do a separate video about this, but I love horse racing so much. I love horses so much. And that's part of also where I'm from. It's like, I grew up riding horses and I love horses and you're going to see a lot of content about horses, but, um, one of the things she said yesterday was, you know, her horse won the Belmont Stakes and she was the first female trainer to have a horse win the Belmont Stakes. And it was on the 50th anniversary of Secretariat's Triple Crown win. And the thing about that is in her interview, her after race interview, she, it, she basically said something that I've listened to like a thousand times today. I just had her interview and she said, you know, if they don't have a, or it's, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but if they don't have a seat for you at the table, make your own table. And so I've been thinking about that phrase all day and how that really does apply to what this new moon is asking us to do and what Saturn's asking us to do and what Pluto's asking us to do is how are you going to create your own damn table? How are you going to be in the world and be like, you know what? I see that power structures are this way, Pluto. I'm fucking pissed off. I think I'm enough into the video to say fucking. Um, and it's time for me to figure out what my own table looks like. I might not have the bells and whistles, you know, but I have chutzpah, you know. And I think that that's what these transits are saying in many ways. 
So we have the outer planets being like, where is your inner chutzpah? Where is your inner, you know, dig down deep into your soul and be like, this is what I'm all about. And then the other piece of it is like, well, we have a new moon in Gemini that's asking us to communicate this in a specific way. And by the way, none of the shit is perfect. None of the shit is perfect. The work is not perfect. We're not going to go into this work looking perfect. That's the part of this whole mutable sign process. Like squares, squares in astrology, especially the fact that we have a Saturn or a Saturn square this week is kind of that inner critic. And the inner critic is saying, hey, well, what have you been flogging yourself for for so long? Well, now Saturn is going into retrograde and bringing you back to zero degrees by November the 4th. So we're going from seven to zero with Saturn in retrograde, which is basically saying right right around March 7th, there was some sort of hope dream created in your life. And now you're going to decide in this process of not only digging away at your psychology, but digging away at old systems. And I love that Saturn's in a water sign while Pluto's in Saturn, you know, in a Saturn sign. Because this, this is in many ways, the it's not like the Aries battle. This is when you assess where you fucked up in the battle. Where did you fuck up in the battle? What factors aligned, didn't align? What needed to come into your life? What is it that you're holding hope for that needs to be cut away in order to bring new growth? And part of this might not show itself until later on in the year. And the thing about Saturn is Saturn is delayed gratification. And when I talk about the East Coast, the energy of the East Coast is kind of all about like this hustle grind culture and being in the energy again in a different mindset where I'm just like, hey, like, I don't know what I'm, you know, really going to be doing, but I do hold faith. That's the other thing about the fact that Saturn's in Pisces is Pisces is literally the sign of faith, literally the final sign in the Western Zodiac asking us to hold and keep faith. And I think that that is another important lesson here because, you know, it's so easy to lose faith. It's so easy when you can't see, and especially with Gemini, when there's so much thought going on at once and the thing about that is you know Gemini does bring this reflection you know the Gemini energy does bring the twins you know and there can be the trickster energy too here so I think it's important to also hold that vision and say you know as long as I as long as it's known that this is not instant this is not an insta cup. <laughs> and I wrote this note, responsibility, respect, and review is what these retrogrades are about as we head into a new moon. And I think it's like this year is such a year of synchronicity, as I'll keep saying, that it is really about faith. The justice card. You know, Justice is about finding that balance. Let's see. I'm going to do. Um, 
on the Queen of Cups. We have Justice and Queen of Cups out. And let's see. We'll do one more. And if you do have questions, you're absolutely welcome to ask me. I'm just trying to feel these cards out. Because I kind of like with the energy of Pisces, you kind of want to move slow. With the energy of Capricorn, obviously Capricorn moves slow. And then we just have Gemini, which wants to like go, go, go. So we have Mercury and Gemini. But really, it's like this. That's why it's like, okay, I need this now. But I need to slow down. So it's sort of that vibe. And then we have the Ace of Wands. New beginnings and creativity. Okay. And the Six of Cups. Let me do two more. I want to kind of get a nice... Okay. One... Two. Okay. So yes, this is not Instacup, three of wands. And this is kind of like being your ships are coming in, but in this in this kind of stance, I'm looking at this as later on in the year. And I also do think that our eclipses are going to bring us some inbound stuff. So it's like we're setting ourselves up. How can you incrementally set yourself up? And like I said before, this is a statistical analytical week. It's really kind of saying, how do you look at the situation and really write down the bullet points of the week, really write down like, this is how I feel here. This is where I really want to go. And this is where I see myself six months from now, because this is what this new moon is planting is bringing us through is allowing that manifestation because new moons are about those goals are about assessing those goals so i also have the ace of cups out which is a beautiful card that likes to that has been popping out i'd say for a couple of these videos and that is the heart of the matter and so haha that gets me into the fact that now this is experimental, okay? This whole video is experimental, so just listen up because I am also kind of looking at the intuitive reading portion with the divine twin flame. So I wrote down my notes and that's what also Mercury is about. It's like your list taking, your to-do lists, all these things. So I'm very excited because Venus and Mars are in Leo. And this is something where you want to put a pin and remember Venus is in Leo. We're going to talk about this next week as we head into the summer slash winter solstice and Venus and Mars and Leo means the divine masculine, divine feminine energy. Either if you look at this as a twin flame that, you know, and you're like, this is a twin flame in my life or the twin flame from within, that's that's really more what I like to talk about, is sort of the balanced justice, divine, feminine, masculine, sort of that balance scale within us. So if something goes out of kilter, we're going to have to work through it. So in this particular way, we're looking at creativity, that ace, that ace of wands, that spark of like, oh my gosh, this is what I have to do. The thing is that I really, really, really think is interesting is for this new moon, Mars and Lilith align. They're very close to one another. And Lilith is the asteroid of sort of the feminist. She's like a feminist icon. Um, you know, they call her Adam's first wife, but really she's just equal. She is 100% free. She's in her you know, raw feminine energy. And here, you know, the divine masculine energy, Mars and Lilith are speaking to each other in this new moon energy. So I really like that because this is going to start showing itself a little bit as we head into next week as well. And Venus is going to be very much also 
heading into a retrograde cycle. So we'll talk about that next week, but that's where we're kind of headed. It's like, how do we get to the heart of the matter in our own creative space? How do we, how do we really love ourselves through this whole process? And I want to shout out to those on the live stream. Hello. Okay. I think these are for the new moon itself. Uh-huh. Okay. So this is for the new moon. I have the devil. This is definitely Pluto. We are assessing those old, old ways that do not serve us. This is like, when I say old ways, I mean like Congress. I mean like, you know, documents that were written in 1776, things like that. We're reassessing this as a society right now. I have the moon. The moon is out. Well, in this particular case, we're not going to see the moon, but we can feel the moon. And next to the moon, we have the empress. And Jupiter and the north node are still in the sign of Taurus. So we do have this fixed energy also holding us. There isn't, there is, hey, there's mutable energy, but there's a way to kind of keep calm and ground. That's why I'm like going into this podcast. Look, let me know in the comments if the grounding works for you, because normally I'm like up and like, ah, but I wanted to come into this podcast grounded this week. So, um, and by the way, the comic in me is like, I can see every mistake that I'm doing, but it's like, but that's what tarot and astrology are for. They're for letting us know that creativity is not about, creativity is messy. That's what the Empress is saying. Creativity is like paint, paint, like let the paint on the walls and carpet, I don't know. And then the strength. And I think our strength card is really also about this Leo energy. And Leo is going to be a very, I mean, we've had, I was thinking back to the last time Leo, uh, Venus was retrograde in Leo. And I was like, wow, like to think about where we were at the last time Venus was retrograde in Leo, that was the summer of 2015. And it's so interesting. I actually want to kind of address that. I want to, so Venus was retrograde summer of 2015 but then I want to also talk about this new moon also if I'm looking at like the divine twin flame aspect of it I was thinking back to spring of 2020 and the exact dates um are May 13th through June 25th 2020 and we were working very similar energy to this particular new moon on the 18th and then we also had Mars retrograde and Mars retrograde dates were from October 30th of last year, 2022 through January 12th of this year, 2023. And this sort of energy is reappearing with this new moon. So I think it's interesting that these cards are on the table because Pluto was very much in Capricorn for that, for that situation. And we, we, I mean, 2020, that took us into a whole new world. So that's what really happened with us was this Pluto Capricorn stuff is really trying to shift society. And it's just like, ah, we are here to do this work. But oftentimes it's like, do I really have to revisit this? Like with a retrograde, you're like, I thought I did this already. And then the retrograde comes around and it's like, yeah, but you didn't do it from this angle. Don't you want to try it from this angle? And you're just like, do I really have to? And then the lesson's like, well, if you don't, then the next time I'm in retrograde, I'm just going to come back again. And then it's going to be even more fucked up and you're going to have to really do this. And you're like, damn it. And that's what a retrograde is. A retrograde is when you like look at something and you're like, damn it. Fuck, I did that. I thought I did that. Ah, oh, Lord. Okay. 
All righty. Thank for the hearts. Whoever sent me hearts. I appreciate that. Pete says, I ground by walking every day. Uh, just my time with my breath, nature. I always appreciate your openness and vulnerability. I love to see people working towards being their best selves during this time. It's all about realizing how much more there is to life than what we're being taught. Yeah, I appreciate that, Pete. And that's the thing in stand-up comedy right now. It's like trying to find your voice again in stand-up comedy when you're approaching this from a perspective of like, why do I do stand up? You know, I, and especially in this world today, you know, I've said this before and I'll say it again is like comedy is like eclipse culture now. And I think a lot of comedians have this pressure instead of writing from your heart is, you know, getting on stage and being like, let me make sure I have 15 seconds so that I can make it a real and then put it online but really like what I love about stand like the way I love stand-up comedy is I love to go to these like bars in the middle of nowhere and I know where I'll be going tomorrow and I know where I'm getting on stage tomorrow it's a place called Benny's and it's in a place called Hagerstown Maryland which has its Hagerstown this old ass hag this old hag here is going to Hagerstown, Maryland tomorrow, and I'll be at Benny's. And I have hot, fresh, new material that I'll be doing, uh, not based on any pressure or anything like that or any need to please anybody. It's literally just shit that I want to say. And I think for me in LA, you know, the tough part is in LA, I'm at the club open mic level and the club open mics in LA are beautiful because you get, you know, a lot of experience with that. For me, I was asking myself, what makes me the best writer? Do I want to please certain people or do I just want to be the best writer I could be and the, and learn how to connect to people again? Because I feel like Pete, I think for me being on the road actually created almost this disconnect from humanity and also the you know the pandemic like I've I don't know about people out there and I'm just going to pose this but socially I've always been weird and awkward and now I'm even like weird and awkward times a billion so but if you're in Hagerstown Maryland come on out to Benny's I think it's at 7. I think it's at 7 p.m. Okay, I'm going to do like a final shuffle. And thank you for those who are watching. And if y'all, if any of you have any questions, you can ask. Um, I, oh, thank you, Paul. We got Pete and we got Paul. But we don't, I don't know where Mary went. I guess she's here. She's in Maryland. Okay. Look, I make I make dad jokes now. All right. Oh, here's that ace of wands again. And do 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 the hermit. Now Saturn is the hermit. I also see Saturn as the crone. Mary's having an operation. <laughs> I like that. This is also Pluto. We also have the South Node in Scorpio with the Death card. So there, there is still a releasing energy with the South Node. And I do think that as we go forward in the months to come, we're also going to have a little more pickup to our pace because we're going to have the North Node entering the fire realms. And we're also going to have we're going to be working with a lot of fire this summer, even though fire is in retrograde, a fire sign is in retrograde. We're going to be working with our heart chakra and that includes our self-expression energy. So that is, I think that's that for today.
And those watching on YouTube understand I'm awkward as fuck. Uh, but I'm like, I love astrology. I also love comedy. So you get what you get with me. I, you know, I go off the rails. I go off track. What's up, Paul? I do feel like more. I will be at Benny's. I will be probably bombing. And that's not like mantra or words. It's just I'm going in with no. I'm just going in raw. Like I'm going in absolutely raw. Um, I'm still trying to find my place in stand-up comedy. I love it so fucking much, but I digress. So, okay. It's just, it's fun to shuffle cards. It's fun to shuffle. And it's also just fun to talk to you guys. I love being on a live stream. Like, I really miss live streaming. It just, it warms my heart to see people, like, from all over the country. It just makes me so happy. So I hope you guys are doing well. We have eight of pentacles out. This is day by day. Do your work little by little, just like I learned at, with this past uh, triple crown race. It's, it's. It, there is a whole spiritual element to horses and horse racing and synchronicity that I very much, very much love. Um, I have the Eight of Cups. So we are kind of moving on from the past, entering a new realm, leaving, leaving that shit behind. You know what I mean? Leaving that shit behind. And then again, the Three of Wands is out. I do get repeat cards. And when I do get repeat cards, that's usually like, for me, it's because, you know, again, being in Maryland is hard. I don't know if anybody grew up in a conservative area, but this shit is anti-God, according to what I grew up under. So when I do this in Maryland, it feels like I'm being sacrilegious. It's like, oh, shit. Like, <laughs> here's this he heathen going to Hagerstown, you know? Here's this, here's the bruja, you know? So... But that is Trust Your Glitter for the week. I hope you all feel super lovely and glittery. 7.30 tomorrow. Cool. I will go there at 7.30. 7 tomorrow. Uh, all thank you. And for those watching on YouTube, thank you for popping in and Spotify and iTunes. And please, please like and subscribe. I'm on YouTube, Christy Bellich. Uh, I'm trying to get my YouTube likes and numbers up. So if y'all can head over there, I'd be really, really appreciative. But thank you for watching my live stream. Comment below, you know, ask questions, DM me. I'm definitely open to any sort of suggestions as I kind of go along my little weird uh, ride down the river. Have a good one. Take care. Bye.